1970, English brass rock band Trifle released their singular album, First Meeting, On Dawn, and from it, the opener, Alibi Annie. <laughs> Very, uh, very uh, scratchy, uh, troubly riff there, um, already indicating kind of like a, an early onset of funk on the UK scene. Okay, I love the uh, really refined um, call and response between um, the horn section and that uh, kind of a little primitive organ sound that seems to um, harken back to the early 60s in a way. It's, um, I'm already kind of reminded somewhat of the meters, as if uh, like uh, just really early onset of, of like funk developments before, before anyone in the UK else in the UK had, had caught on to it all. I should uh, point out that um, among the horn players is a Dick Cuffle. Yeah, he plays a uh, flugelhorn and trumpet on the album, and he would later uh, he, he would become a very prolific uh, studio musician over the next uh, two decades. And at one point, joined the Specials. Yeah, as one of the additional uh, as one of the brass players. He um, he he's like in the videos, I guess, to the. Um, the albums from the video, the, the songs, the singles released from their first album, and uh, then joined on uh, more specials and, and stayed with the band through their next iteration as uh, specials, aka. Her taste is for long hair. <laughs> And when she crashes out, she lacks plenty upstairs. Okay, I just uh, looked up. I, I, I didn't expect to find the lyrics online. I'm not seeing here, but I was wondering if the phrase alibi Annie is an idiom of some sort if it's it if it's like a a, a character in the English lexicon um and uh but no the uh the title basically just brings up uh returns to the song yeah. <laughs> That uh, guitar riff is putting in like a, like a dull note in, into the proceedings. It's something sort of like like flat in there, or like like lowered. It, it's it's just kind of like playing this like same uh, combination of notes, just in, in that that really tight, you, you know, brisk, you know, trebly strum against whatever happens to be playing. Just. Uh, Seems like a to touch the moon. She exaggerates the story. But she giggles while she laughs. She exaggerates the story, but she giggles while she laughs. But when you know her well, the just and it's all Great 
great organ work there and um, interaction with the horn section. Let's, let's see, who else uh, do we have? Um, uh, let's see, alto sax, tenor sax, um, vocals, uh, Barry Martin, and um, let's see, guitar, John Hitchin, and bass and vocals, Patrick King. Um, quite a few of these uh, guys went on to other other things. The track was written uh, between four four guys: Greenwood, Cuthall, Bean, and King. Yeah, I don't know who is. Oh, more on that. Who, who's actually singing? But uh, doesn't say lead vocals in. <laughs> Okay, I like that change right here. Everything's getting more staccato, tighter. These sounds like that organ's just kind of like being choked almost. That's kind of gasping for breath. Um, I'm hearing some sounds now that kind of remind me of moments on the Quatermass album. Yeah. Or maybe that uh, German Andromeda record. Oh, I just love how that organ is just like fighting its way out of that like one note, or that like monochordal tight tight groove between the uh, the the rhythm section and that guitar. Great epic rise from that that midsection, that that somewhat kind of mangled midsection there, yeah. A lot of breaks, a lot of tightness, a lot of uh, just really emphasized. Uh, yeah, yeah. Every every note that's put in just has such oomph to it. Like including the vocals. Beneath the sheet. Okay, I believe uh, vocals are by George Bean because he's just credited with vocals and, and tambourine. And um, oh, he. It goes back to the early 60s. Yeah, he was part of the uh, beat. Let's see, George Bean and the Runner Beans, I, I guess a, a beat group from the early 60s. Um, and um, he, uh, let's see, did he, 22 credits according to Scog. So after um, the beat era, this, uh, this may have been about the only thing he did. So as far as he got into the 1970s was this album, according to the Scogs. So. You're any alibi. Yeah, his vocals um, are quite uh, like masterful in, in in what they're trying to achieve. That 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 that, that kind of that that soul element. Um, that uh, I guess you could say uh, um, is something that he gained through his years on the beat scene, on the R and B scene. Um, apparently, probably doing music in a similar vein to like what uh, oh Paul Jones and. Uh, <clears throat> Some of those other vocalists that were heavily influenced by um, American blues and soul during the early to mid 1960s. Um, he, he's he's refined and yet he's also expressive. Um, 
And that really counts for something on the 1970 rock scene in the UK where um, you had certain vocalists that were really upping the bar in terms of emotiveness. And you had um, like others, a lot of others that were just wailing and, and ultimately flailing in their attempts to try and mimic, uh, say, Ian Gillen or Robert Plant. It, it would take a couple of years for uh, the, the newer influx of male rock vocalists to know their strengths and their limitations. Um, and he's just, this guy, um, yeah, um, George Bean is just kind of maintaining I, I guess more his his, his mid sixties type of phrasing and, and such and expression and it's working quite well amid this music that is um, both um, kind of ahead of its time for an English act in its in its appropriation of funk elements and um, also uh, somewhat uh, hearkening back to the the mid sixties you could say and some of the well the sounds used and and uh, the, the more refined arrangements, yeah, that, um, that, 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 that in some respects it could also uh, walk uh, quite comfortably beside the likes of, uh, say, like uh, the Graham Bond Organization or uh, the Spencer Davis Group. Yeah, hold on just a second. I didn't know it was going to get that dark. Anyway, um, yeah, Trifle, I will buy Annie. Let's hear another track from the album, uh, First Meeting, uh, One Way Glass. <laughs> You know, that almost sounds like, it, this just occurred to me now, um, like a whole lot of love uh, transferred to the bass. Okay, don't go very far with that, with that analogy. It's just um, something about the cadence, the, the measure of, of, of notes and everything. Um, but we're getting... Uh, this is going to go in a very different direction than anything Led Zeppelin did. Give me a window with one way glass. Look out on the world, would you people pass? Give me a window to shield me. Where I can be seen, I don't want to be free. Yeah, once again, showing uh, the vocalist, uh, showing his, you know, reserve his um command and uh just his kind of a laid-back nature yeah that, that was something uh you, you didn't get a lot of kind of like laid-back self-assured vocalists around this time there, there was a lot of um yeah that that's more more kind of like the point that we're like well paul rogers i've i've um pointed out as as one who who um was was kind of just like had this like laid-back cool about him while everyone else was like really trying to prove their uh their uh, prowess, let's say. Okay, now that seems to um, function as the chorus of the track. Yeah, that, that uh, brass riff right there. Oh, I love that touch where you have uh, like psychedelic uh, guitar noodling that's like low in the mix like that. is by uh, Patrick King, um, very uh, prominent in this. He would later uh, join Manfred Mann's Earth Band. He would play on the albums uh, Watch, Angel Station, and Chance. Yeah, three of their best. No 
notice how that, that clean uh, guitar just came in with those careful notes. Yeah, I, I love how uh, different bars will bring about different touches uh, amid everything else that's going on, like the vocal, you know, counterpoint against the, um, the, the music and all. Give me a window with one-way glass. A one-way glass must be about uh, wanting to see and not be seen. by Chico Greenwood, and um, let's see, he had been in Jasper, oh, he would um, appear in Moonrider in 1975, yeah, um, with um, ex-Tomorrow uh, vocalist Keith West, and uh, former Quiver Future Attraction bassist Bruce uh, Thomas, yeah, a great one off there. <laughs> the uh, keyboardist uh, before we go. Um, yeah, he would later uh, show up in the bands uh, Sniff in the Tears and um, McCalla with, uh, of course, with uh, vocalist Noel McCalla from Moon. And I, I ended up just mentioning him as well in the Lie of the World video, yeah. <laughs> Great, just kind of like um, several instruments kind of drop out and, and we have that, that refrain um, of, of the vocals uh, amid this like uh, just kind of increasingly dissonant sax fade out. Yeah, that just kind of, yeah, er everything just kind of crumbles around that sax. Yeah, great. Um, One Way Glass by Trifle and before that Alibi Annie, two standout cuts from their 1970 release, First Meeting on Dawn Pie. Yeah, um, one of many uh, brass rock bands that emerged in the UK around 1970, and one of the funkiest. Yeah. For more Rubies and Sapphires from the Trifle album, see the directory of albums by English <coughs> tea artists linked in the description below for Red Hot Tracks and Purples from uh, Trifle, as well as from uh, Trapeze, um, T2, um, Titus Grown. Yeah, the whole, uh, you know, the whole uh, Tucky Buzzard, um, Thomas Dolby, Toya Wilcox, Talk Talk, Trickster, yeah, Tokyo Blade, yeah, the whole uh, Tigers of Pantang, 10 years after, Tea and Symphony, <laughs> Time Box, yeah, the handy uh, Jeff on the directory, Tears for Fears, yeah, Traffic, Tomorrow, Tempest. 
<clears throat> like and subscribe, follow me on social media, share the video, and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about the two tracks we just heard, the layers, the interplay, the nuances, the soloing, yeah, who had the best break, the best moment, the lyrics, if you uh, caught them a bit more. And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear-traveled tri signing off. <laughs>